In this lecture video, we're going to talk about the voltage of a voltaic cell, which is also called the cell potential. Voltage is often defined using this example from physics, where we have two thin metal plates that are parallel to one another. This top plate has negative charges, and the bottom plate has positive charges. If a charged particle were placed in between these two plates, it would naturally move towards one of these plates. So for example, I'll choose an electron because electrons are involved in redox reactions. So an electron would move naturally towards the positive plate because that would be an attractive force. And so this electron would initially start at a position where it has a high electric potential energy. And as it moves towards the positive plate, that electric potential energy would get lowered. Voltage is defined as the change in this electric potential energy per unit charge. And that's also captured in this equation where voltage V is equal to the change in energy delta E divided by charge Q. In voltaic cells, metal electrodes naturally have different electric potentials. So an electron that's housed inside a zinc metal will have a higher electric potential energy than an electron that's housed in the copper metal, where it would have a lower electric potential energy. And because of this difference in energy, there would be a natural driving force for this electron to move from zinc to copper plus two to form copper metal. So in a voltaic cell, the voltage is this difference in electric potential between the two metal electrodes. And this voltage in a voltaic cell is called the cell potential, which is represented by E subscript cell. In the zinc-copper voltaic cell, we can actually measure the cell potential simply by putting a voltmeter in the wire that connects these two metal electrodes. And the readout of this voltmeter then would be equal to the cell potential or the potential difference between the zinc and copper electrodes. So we know that in this voltaic cell, electrons spontaneously flow from zinc towards the copper electrode where copper 2 plus gets reduced to copper metal. And this is consistent from it moving from high electric potential energy to low electric potential energy. When electron transfer is spontaneous, this corresponds to a positive value in the cell potential where E cell will be greater than zero. To move an electron in the opposite direction from copper, which is at low electric potential energy, to high potential energy would not be spontaneous. And so the E cell for moving electron in this direction would be a negative value. To compare different cell potentials across many different types of voltaic cells, it again makes sense to use the standard state as a reference. And so here we can define what's called the standard cell potential or E naught cell. And this is just what's measured on the voltmeter when the voltaic cell is at a, the standard state. And so for the zinc copper voltaic cell, this would mean that the zinc and copper plus two ions are both one molar in concentration. And indeed the readout would be a positive value indicating that there is indeed spontaneous electron transfer from zinc to copper at the standard state. This is the overall redox reaction that occurs in the zinc-copper voltaic cell. And if this reaction was done at the standard state, we would measure a standard cell potential of plus 1.1 volts. In the next slides, I'm going to introduce the concept of a half cell potential. And that's because we can split all redox reactions into their half reactions. So here we have zinc being oxidized to zinc plus two and copper being reduced to copper metal. And for each of these half reactions, we can define 
a half cell potential that corresponds here to the oxidation of zinc or to the reduction of copper plus two. And because the redox reaction is a sum of these two half reactions, then the full cell potential would also be a sum of these half cell potentials. Half cell potentials are really useful information for predicting spontaneous energy transfer. And so here's a table where for various half reactions, we have their corresponding half cell potential values. And you can see they roughly range from about plus three volts to about minus three volts. There's a full table in Appendix D of your textbook. There are a few important things to note about these tabulated values. The first is that they are all measured at the standard state. And so that means if there's gases, they are one atmosphere pressure, it's one molar for concentration, and typically they're measured at room temperature. Another thing is that by convention, they all follow this general equation. So you'll see here in many examples, we have a metal ion plus a number of electrons to generate the reduced metal. Now, we also have some species that are not metal ions or metals. And so a more general form is that we have an oxidized species plus a number of electrons to form its reduced partner. All these values for the half cell potentials are all being reported in reference to a zero volt standard. And usually the half cell reaction that's selected for this reference is the standard hydrogen electrode, or SHE. And this is the half reaction where protons and electrons are reduced to form hydrogen gas. Now I'd like to highlight again the two half reactions that are involved in the zinc copper voltaic cell. So focusing on the zinc here, we have that zinc two plus, plus two electrons to zinc metal has a half cell potential of negative 0.76 volts. The most straightforward way to measure that half cell potential for the zinc electrode is to do so from this experiment. In this voltaic cell, we have zinc on one side with zinc two plus ions. And on the other side, we have set up a standard hydrogen electrode where we have protons and hydrogen gas. And because neither of these materials are suitable for an electrode, we do need to use an inactive electrode, which is typically a platinum wire. Platinum is often used because it's a great catalyst for making and breaking hydrogen gas. Now we have these overall redox reaction where electrons spontaneously flow from the zinc metal towards the standard hydrogen electrode where protons get reduced to hydrogen. And so that's the overall cell reaction. Now this cell reaction would have a cell potential that's measured at the standard state. So that means one atmosphere for hydrogen gas and one molar for the ions. And so we can say the standard cell potential is equal to positive 0.76 volts. Now this cell potential is also related to the half cell potentials. And so for the standard hydrogen electrode, we set this as the zero volt reference. And so this will be equal to zero volts. That means then at the zinc electrode, that half cell potential must be positive 0.76 volts because these two should sum to give the whole cell potential. Now you'll remember in these tabulated values, the conventional form is written not in this oxidation reaction, but as a reduction reaction where zinc plus two ion is being reduced to form zinc metal. And so the tabulated half cell potential then is not from zinc to zinc plus two, but rather zinc plus two to zinc metal. And so that means I need to take this value and put a negative sign in front since this reaction is the reverse 
of the oxidation reaction. And so that is where the half cell potential for zinc plus two to zinc metal is tabulated as minus 0.76 volts. Half cell potentials are really useful because we can use them to predict the cell potential for any redox reaction. So in returning to the zinc copper voltaic cell, we're going to show how half cell potentials can ultimately be used to predict the cell potential of plus 1.1 volts. In this first half reaction, zinc metal is being oxidized to zinc plus 2. So we can think of this potential as being equal to the opposite or the negative of the tabulated half cell value. And that's because this reaction as written is actually in the opposite direction of the conventional form used for these tabulated values. So plugging in minus 0.76 volts from the table, we would get that the half reaction written here would have an overall potential of positive 0.76 volts. In the second half reaction, copper plus 2 is being reduced to copper metal. And this is written in the conventional form for those tabulated values. So then the potential for this half reaction then is just equal to what's been tabulated and that would be 0.34 volts. So you can see then that the overall cell potential is really just a sum of its two half reaction potentials. And another general formula is to say that this cell potential is equal to the tabulated half cell potential of the cathode minus the tabulated half cell potential of the anode. And this minus sign is just to reflect the fact that the anode reaction is opposite to the convention used in those tabulated values. Coming back to this table of different half reactions and their half cell potentials, we can think of all of these as really a reaction between an oxidized species that's getting reduced by some electrons to form its reduced species partner. So in all these half reactions, what we're showing is the oxidized species in the red box and the reduced species in the blue box. Now, all these oxidized species can serve as oxidizing agents, and all these reduced species can serve as reducing agents. And so now we can use the different values of these half cell potentials to predict whether these oxidizing agents or these reducing agents are strong or weak. This analysis is based on the fact that for spontaneous electron transfer, you want to have a positive value for the potential. So for an oxidizing agent to be strong, what you really want is this reaction to be strongly favored, where the oxidized species picks up electrons to form its reduced partner. So for this reaction, then, you want a large positive E0, where the oxidized species turns into the reduced species. Now, because this reaction is the conventional form for these tabulated values, that means then we just need a large positive half-cell potential value. In the table here, the largest positive value is plus 2.87, for F2, or fluorine gas. So that means fluorine gas is an extremely strong oxidizing agent. Now, its reduced partner, F- is a very weak reductant. For a strong reducing agent, you want the opposite reaction to be strongly favored, where now we begin with the reduced species, and it forms the oxidized species by a loss of some electrons. So for this reaction as written, we want a large positive potential value where the reduced species turns into the oxidized species. Now, this is the opposite of the conventional form. And so what that then means then is we want a large negative half cell potential. The most negative potential here is minus 3.05, and that is for lithium ion 
plus electron to form lithium metal. So that means then that the lithium metal is a very strong reducing agent and lithium plus then would be a very weak oxidizing agent. In summary, in this table here, large positive half cell reactions means that the reaction is favored as written and we have a strong oxidizing species. On the opposite end, very large negative values means that the reverse reaction is favored where we have a very strong reducing agent. In a typical problem, we're often given two half reactions and their tabulated half cell potentials and asked to determine the overall redox reaction that would be spontaneous as well as the cell potential for that overall reaction. So we want to take these two half reactions and turn one from a reduction to an oxidation because a redox reaction should have both an oxidation and a reduction half reaction. And the choice would depend on which of these sums would allow us to have an overall positive cell potential because that would be spontaneous. Another way of doing this is to look at these half cell potentials and realize that the larger or more positive value would correspond to the stronger oxidizing agent and the lower or more negative value would correspond to the stronger reducing agent. For redox reaction, the spontaneous direction is always from the stronger reducing agent plus the stronger oxidizing agent to give their weaker counterparts as products. And so in these two examples, the positive 0.8 volt would correspond to the stronger oxidizing agent and the negative 0.44 volt would correspond to the stronger reducing agent. So that means silver plus is a stronger oxidizing agent than iron 2 plus, and iron metal is a stronger reductant than silver metal. So now we want to set up these half reactions such that iron metal and silver plus are my reactants, and then we can sum them and combine them to form the overall redox reaction. So for the first half reaction, this is iron metal to iron 2 plus, and because this is written in the opposite form of what's tabulated, we have to put a minus sign in front of that tabulated value. So then we can have a minus sign times negative 0.44 volts, which would mean that this half reaction as written has an overall positive potential of plus 0.44 volts. The second half reaction is silver plus to silver metal. And this is written in the conventional format for those tabulated values. So this half cell potential is simply from the table and that would be positive 0.80 volts. Now to find the overall redox reaction, we just need to combine these half reactions such that the number of electrons will cancel out. And in order to do that, I will need to multiply an integer of two to the second equation. And so in sum, the overall redox reaction in the spontaneous direction is iron metal plus two equivalents of silver plus to get iron two plus ion and two equivalents of silver metal. To determine the cell potential, we simply need to sum the half cell potentials for these reactions as written, and that would be 0.44 plus 0.8 to give 1.24 volts as the overall cell potential. So you might notice that a factor of two was needed to write the overall redox reaction. However, that factor of two does not affect the cell potential. And that's because cell potentials do not depend on the number of electrons or charge that is transferred. We will see in the next section that the energy of the redox reaction will depend on the cell potential and the charge.
for the number of electrons that are transferred.